Okay, in the back. Good. Whenever you're ready, Coach. All right. After evaluating the game uh, Saturday, looking at the film, the game was a very physical game, very hard fought game. Uh, they played very well, have a good football team, give them all the credit. Uh, it was a game in which we uh, didn't capitalize on opportunities which we had in the game and had could have done it in all three phases. Uh, didn't make the plays in which we needed to. And again, again, we have to put our guys, make sure we're getting them in the right position. We got to coach them, make sure they understand everything. And then we got to relax and don't try over prep and just make plays. I mean, we could have had some interceptions early in the game uh, that could really change things. Had a fumble in the red zone and gave up a drive. I mean, those type of things are big momentum swings and had a great opportunity to come back right before the half. Uh, miss a block. Don't have a chance for a touchdown, not have a chance for a field goal. Uh, then come out and have a great drive, you know, and drop one. Down there could have been a touchdown, but listen, them guys don't, they're play, playing hard, playing, working hard. Uh, just have to don't uh, relax and make the plays when we have the chances. And then we have a blocked field goal, I mean, it goes on. And we had opportunities in all three phases to make plays and do the things we need to do. And we have to get better, we have to keep making them, put our guys in position, reinforce the things they're doing well, make sure we're giving them the confidence to do the things they have to do, and let them play. And, uh, at the end of the day, it's what it gets down to, and you got to do it. So, got a great opportunity this weekend now. Got to put it behind us, that game. Get ready for number one team in the country, Alabama. And, uh, you know, they're an outstanding team. Of course, you know, Nick's a tremendous coach. He got great players, coached well, playing well, doing everything there, and got to go on the road and play again. So, that, and like I say, you got to move on. You can't let one become two and, and let that progress. But, you know, we got to work this week and make the adjustments and make the corrections and, and get better. Questions? Our fourth row on the left, Andy. Hey, Andy. Why, why has it been so hard offensively for them to relax? Do, do they look comfortable in practice and it doesn't show mm -hmm. in games? Or I don't think they're not relaxed. Just gotta relax. Yeah, sometimes you want to try when you're young, and you got young guys in critical positions. That sometimes they they just want to try too hard. I don't know. I mean, we talk to them every day, put them, give them confidence. They do it in practice every day, and just gotta relax and play. Front, uh, right, Travis, and then Brent. Hey, coach. Uh, Jalen Milrow, Milrow, I know a guy y'all recruited. Do you, can mm -hmm. you think back a little bit on uh, how, what that recruitment was like and what, what attracted you to, to him? Very athletic, strong, has a strong arm, could throw the heck out of it, came to our camp. Uh, great body, great competitor. I mean, did a heck of a job in camp. He was a guy we were recruiting at the time. And I'm trying to think, what year? how many years has he been there? He's class 21. Or may have been Stowers. Stowers and that group, and then they, they were all in camp. They were all in camp together. Yeah, and uh, I was trying to just remember what year it was, but I know he was here. He's an outstanding athlete, and I believe we – Stowers had committed to us, I think, first. I think that, and then he went to Alabama, I believe. But there's an outstanding player, athletic, strong, uh, throw it a mile. I mean, hit what he throws at, very accurate, I mean, accurate that way, and then tremendous athlete. You feel like he was a guy that, that – We were recruiting had. Oh, yeah, we were recruiting him. We were definitely recruiting Stay on the right, Brent, and then to the left side. Any update on Max Johnson? No, we'll go day to day. Just, I mean, bang his hand. We'll just evaluate him as it goes day to day. And then obviously Haynes would be the guy. Um, yeah, right now Haynes and we'll get Haynes and Connor ready to play if if there's something there. But if not, we'll have to wait and see if Max can. You know, that, that's day to day. So we we'll have to judge. He'll get as much reps as he can too. So in May, you sit up there and you you urge reporters to check into Coach Saban's background to Nick Saban's background mm -hmm. and say. You know, what, what was the intent of that? And do you feel like it? it and that's over with. Purpose? He and I are we're in great shape. We're great things. And we moved on. You had said at that point it was over. We moved on. Yeah. So things are good now between y'all? We, we're, we're in good shape. We're moved on. Front left, Zach. Jimbo over here on the left. Um, yes. When it comes particularly to offense, and it very well might piggyback off of what Andy asked, mm -hmm. you talk about execution a lot. And your teams, obviously, in the past have been able to execute on offense. Why has it been so difficult for this particular well, team? Well, each, each person's different. Each group's different. Each personnel thing's different. And sometimes it's not always the same guy all the time. Guys take a turn. You know, if one guy takes a turn and one guy takes a turn, and then all of a sudden, you know, it can mess up a drive. And that's just the way football is. It's very – it's the ultimate team game. It had it's all 11 at all times to, to play and, and do well. And that's – we just have to keep working at it, making sure we get it and get them, get them the confidence to be able to do it and go to play. Can youth be used as a, as a factor in that? I mean, well, I mean, youth is always a factor, but it's not. I mean, it doesn't matter. That's who you're playing. I mean, you know what I mean? And those guys are very talented. They're very good, and they do it well. And, and they do it most of the time on the field, all the time. It's occasionally at certain points, certain times, we're not, we're not haven't been perfect yet. It hadn't all clicked yet. And we have to keep working that. And we have to give them the confidence, and we have to give them the knowledge. 
and educate them and coach them well to make sure they're in the right space, doing the right thing consistently in practice to allow it to go to the game. And listen, those guys are playing their tails off. It has nothing to do with want to or not wanting to, and they will get it. Front right, Cole, and then to the left, Ari. Jimbo, Lane Kiffin said at SEC Media Days that every single person that coaches underneath Nick Saban takes something away and implements mm -hmm. in their own program. You well, do from you everybody you coach under. You? Well, I, I've, I've taken that from everybody I've coached under. Been under Bobby Bowden, Terry Bowden, Nick Saban, Les Miles. I mean, you, you learn from everybody you have. And, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things we do. you do and you pick up from organizational transitions to knowledge of the game or how defenses – or affiliate, how off, how attack offense, how to how to practice schedule. I mean, everybody has their own way, and you learn from everybody. I mean, you learn from everybody. I learned from all the coaches I had. All of them were highly successful, and uh, all national championship cup coaches. And I've been fortunate. I've been very fortunate to be under uh, Les, Bobby, Nick. All won national championships, and Terry Bowden, who won, we won twenty in a row. His first twenty games at, at Auburn after going to the national playoffs and national semifinals there. So I've been around some successful people. So you learn a lot of things. And Nick's a just a tremendous coach. Arguably, people say he's one of the best ever or the best ever. I mean, that kid could very well be. I mean, that's that's no doubt. There's a huge argument for that. But it's saying and you pick up things you learn from organization to structure to offense to defense, and those things stick with you off and on. There's multiple things you learn from all of them. And learned a lot from Nick, a whole lot from Nick. He's a very, very good football coach. And then in 2020, you decided to move an Iceman to the backfield because you want to implement more of a run game option. With a guy like Devon Achain, who has been effective as well, a Well, we actually did it in 2019. At the end of 2019, and then for the start of 2020, <laughs> you want to put him in the backfield. But for a guy like Devon Achain, just for a security blanket with us, him with his hands, could you maybe consider giving him a little bit more reps in the slot just as a receiving option? Oh, well, we put him out there. We do at times. And also how your young backs go and where you can put him and, and move him around. He has the ability to do that, and he'll be able to do that. Yes. Go to the left, Ari, and then to the right, David. Hey, Coach. Um, Hello. You, you just mentioned Connor's name. Um, Connor. Wegman. We, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, I was wondering, where is he at, at his progression in this Very well. He stays in our reps. We give him reps every week. He takes to, with reps with the twos every week in practice. He's knowledgeable. He says right about me on the plane when we travel and do things in the meetings. He's right in there and really progressing, understands everything we're doing, how we're doing it, and, and is getting better and better. He's going to be, I think, a very, very good player. Yeah, very I know good that player. the, the five-star – freshman quarterback is always a, a topic of mm -hmm. conversation whenever you're in this position. But what is it – is there – what does he have to do in, in your mind? Is he – Yes, he's progressing and felt very comfortable. If he's in the game, we could play very well with Connor and, and win and be very good. I think he's going to be one heck of a player, and he's doing very well right now. All right, David. Jim, is there anything during the week you can do to help players relax for game day? relaxing is not it. It's practicing with habits and so you have confidence to play. You say relax. Relax is your confidence comes from working hard and doing it every day and knowing you can do it. And you don't practice it till you do it right. You practice it till you can't do it wrong. A lot of times you can do it right. But how many times can you not do it wrong? That's the key, and how consistent you can be. Everybody says relax. Well, everybody can relax. Take a deep breath and relax. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, that's not confidence is what allows you to play well. And, that, and you practice well, then you have confidence, and you play well. And then you make a few plays in the game. Like I say, if we happen to get those picks or happen to make that catch or not fumble, and all of a sudden your whole persona changes based off one or two plays and, and how you do things. That's just the game. That's any game. I don't care if it's football, basketball, baseball, anything you do. You just got to keep pressing as far as work habits. But then you got to understand that when the plays are there, relax, be fundamentally sound, put your nose on the ball when you catch it, or put your hands where you got to be when you block it, or – when you're going to intercept it, make sure you're in the right position or whatever it is, and just do it over and over every day in practice. Left cease, and then to the right old. When you graded the offensive line, do you feel that they moved forward last week? And what problems? Well, I'm gonna say this: happen? we ran the football very well. You go back and watch it. We ran the football very well. I mean, opened the first drive eight, seven, three, thirteen, four. Next drive had great runs, uh, had a big twenty-yard run right off the bat, and then we had thirteen, eight, and thirteen when we fumbled. That was in the first three drives. I mean, we were averaging almost 10 yards a carry, nine yards a carry, first three series of the game, run the football. And then we had two twists, that, two pickups inside that we come off a twist that they didn't come in pass pro. And that's where the sacks come from. But run the football, I thought we were excellent. And for the most part, most, I mean, we had a couple little screw-ups in there on the, on the twist game that we come off a guy and should have been on the first, take the first penetrator and the back take the second. And we come off on the, let the first one go and picked up the second. So, I mean, it was that simple. I know that sounds, but that's what happened. And 
but they did progress, and I think we're moving, running the ball very well, and we're getting better in pass pro. I think our ta I think those guys did a good job on the edges. What changed on your defense because you stopped them the first two times, and then after that they seemed to get in rhythm. Did they got. Get, I mean, they made you, plays in the first two drives. They they got some first downs. They got up to midfield and punted us back, uh, but uh, we had opportunities, like I say, to have those. You hit those two interceptions and. Now what's the perception of it? You know what I'm saying? The more you're going, you got to make those plays too. So they just got in the rhythm, hit some plays, and made a, and they had a contested catch coming off the goal line. There was a jump ball, I think, uh, down the sideline. I think they only hit two or three balls, really, over 15, 10 or 15 yards. A lot of short throws and catches and, and runs and, uh, and what they did. But uh, we just got, to, just got out of rhythm, and they got some confidence. And they, and they got a couple runs. They bounced the edges a couple times. We, as I said, we had the edge control and tried to step in and make a play and give up the corner a little bit. And we got to fit it a little bit better from the secondary. And they just got in a roll, and they're, they're a good team. Did you blitz much or st basically stay three-man? We, we blitzed a little, not a, not a ton, but we brought some blitzes. We brought some blitzes. Not the whole, they didn't stay three the whole time. It brought blitzes at times. Second row on right, Olin. Got Jimbo. Um, what is it that uh, makes you so optimistic that the uh, – execution is coming and, and not – Because I know the guys in practice. I see them practicing. I see them do it. I see them just got to advance. just got to take it to the field. Been in the business long enough to watch have young players and, and had teams that done this before, and you just got to keep coaching them. Because I know their, their ability is there, their want to is there, their habits, their work habits, all the things. They're tremendous kids, and we have to do a good job of coaching and put it there. And just my time being in here and knowledge of doing it and done it for many years. And, believe in our, and I believe in our players 100%. And, well, do you – Still believe 100% in uh, DJ and his defensive scheme. You sure do. Yes, sir. Go to the back behind the lights to the left, Tyler. Jimbo, are you able to draw on the uh, oh, – I'm sorry. sorry. Okay, there you are. Back behind the lights. Uh, on last year's experience at all, it's kind of a similar situation coming off a loss to Mississippi State, heavy underdogs to Alabama. I mean, do, do you look at that at all as – not really blueprint, but just the experience. No, you, no you, you live off your experiences. But at the time, we went out in the next week and had tremendous practices and prepared well and went and played well. I mean, that, those are the things that I keep going back to right now. I mean, you got to go prepare well and practice well to have an opportunity to go play a team like Alabama to be able to play to have a chance to, to play well against them. And you have to practice well. So, I mean, we've done that before, but hopefully we'll do it again this week. And I think the kids and our one, two of our players and everything else is there. Great attitude. We just have to go practice well. I also wanted to ask, this week is College Football Mental Health Awareness Week. Uh, just kind of in your words, the, and we talk about the physical preparation, but just <laughs> the, the importance of that. Let me tell you something. In today's time, that is the biggest issue in college sports, bar none. Because of the pressures that are put on these kids from social media, from media, not, and I'm not, it's just what they read, what's out there every day, what people say every day. It is a, you put yourself out there to be scrutinized, criticized, and those young kids get it, I mean, constantly. I mean, we as grown ups, we accept it, we do it. But those kids get that each and every day. Think of it, your kids. You know what I'm saying? And it is a huge problem. It's a major problem. It's a major problem in our society, not just college football. But it is a major, 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 major issue with what's going on. And when you say and do things, and because those kids, it matters, and they have families, and it matters, and it and it does hurt them. That's why we try to tell them, ignore it and stay off of it. That's why I wouldn't even have it. I mean, it's it's a big problem for those kids, and it's a lot more than. I don't, I, maybe we even think and know. Go back behind the lights to the right, Coach Ben. Coach, uh, do you have any update as to how Jalen's been doing? Who's that? Jalen Jones. Jalen Jones. I seem to be doing fine. Seems to be doing really fine. Uh, do you have any? Is he still day to day? And yeah, he'll be day to day. Uh, and then, how much uh, did him going out of the game uh, play into y'all maybe dropping more back? Well, I'm gonna say this. It, it, I mean, it doesn't help when you lose one of your best best players or the best, you know tremendous corner you have. I mean, it doesn't help in that. But again, that's football, and that happens. And you have plans for that, and you have contingencies, and you have other players you have to play, and they're good players. I mean, that's just part of the game. Sometimes those injuries help you, and sometimes they don't. Left, Rob. Howdy, Coach. Howdy. Um, so after watching the film, how did you think Haynes played, and and what did you see on the field goal block as well? <laughs> I guess nothing. I guess it got blocked. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, I guess it was a great jump. I don't know. We'll wait and see what we get back. We can't, you know, we'll get wait and get see what we get back from from the league and, and what goes on there. And, and Haynes came in and led us straight down to a drive, made a great drive. Next drive was leading us again. And I, I thought, you know, just unflourishing the ball went off a guy's hand. I mean, he wasn't trying to miss it, but I thought it was a pretty good throw. 
and the other one he's throwing it out and we make a pickup in a blitz and what happens to the cutting through the thigh we cut through the ankle and when he did he comes into Hain and Hain as he's throwing he can't follow through and leaves the ball short and the guy made a great tip and play but his decision making was good is you know unfortunately he had a couple breaks where the ball tipped the wrong way that he was doing the right things one time he left behind the other one he threw pretty well so I mean but that's part of it but he came in and lived well and took us down to drive took us down two touchdown drives as a matter of fact front right Cole and then Brent you'll wrap it up uh, Jimbo, it feels like with today's generation, keeping them off social media is a bigger challenge than. No, you're not going to, because that's yeah. where they're making NIL money. They're making things. That's that's all part of, that's all part of your world today. So, so with that in mind, with a game such as this, especially with the implications of last year, and then because of how this has been hyped up with the rivalry and everything that goes on, how do you get them prepared to at least understand that what they're reading on social media isn't going to dictate the outcome of the game? Well, because you say that every week. We deal with that every week. I mean, that's, that's a process in which we talk about every week and we call eliminate the clutter and eliminate people that aren't part of us inside because you know what's happening, we know what's happening, and that's what you have to trust and believe in. And that's no offense to anybody else or anybody out there. That's, that's the world we live in. And, and then and they want to have a joyous time and get off social media. <laughs> I mean, but you're not going to. That's just the world where they, they live in and the way they have today, and it's, it's unfortunate, really. And then if there was any indication of what Max couldn't go, is there an opportunity for maybe Connor to even compete for the starting job on yeah, Saturday? They'll compete every day. The best player will play. Connor, Connor can play. We, we can put him in right now. I mean, he, and he would be very comfortable. Yes, he'll have a great week of practice, hopefully, and, and, play, and be ready to play. He prepares every week just like that. Go Brent, and then Travis, you'll wrap us up. I think if I recall, Haynes made his debut, or at least uh, against Alabama, at Alabama a couple of years Two ago. Two years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of his evaluation, how, how did, have you seen him handle the past few weeks? Been and excellent. Stepped right in the other day against Mississippi he State. He stepped right in the middle of a drive and took us down. And him and him and Max work hand in hand every day. They sit together, go over plays, go over concepts, talk about ideas, very active in the meetings, very open in the meetings, helping Max, hey, I see this. I mean, coming off to the field. He's been, he's a tremendous, tremendous human being, handled the situation as, as well as any human can ever be expected to, and actually was a benefit and a help to Max on the information and things that are going on. You said Max day to day. Do you anticipate Haynes starting Saturday night? I don't know. We'll go day to day. <laughs> go to your left there, Travis, you wrap us up. What you want me to do? Call Nick and tell him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, guys, come on, man. <laughs> Go ahead, Travis. Uh, yeah, Coach, um, with the, their two quarterbacks, I assume y'all are scheming for, for either one to go, Bryce or um, uh, Jalen? Well, you said we were, so I was just <laughs> – Are you? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess we are, yeah. We'll, we'll look at what both does and, and play, yes. And, and how does that – I thought you said we were. I, I was waiting for the question, my bad. <laughs> and then how, uh, how does uh, – that differ between the with the, the two guys. Well, straight. you got to study more. I haven't had. I haven't had. I've watched their games, and I'll study more of that as a breakdown. And I'll ask our defensive staff if they're doing anything different. When you really evaluate the game, they're breaking it down in detail, and I'll ask them, you know, where they're going, and I'll reevaluate that later in the week as we're as we're doing some other things. But I mean, he took them down to was it fourteen nothing when he was in the game. They went to twenty eight, and then they ended up breaking the runs, and he still. You know, he make, broke a – had a run down there to get it down there and then hit a, went to 28 and then it got back 28-23 and he broke that long run. It was third and 15. And then he broke a 60-some yard run down to like the three or four. And then they got in and then they broke two other runs. So, I mean, he played probably from the middle of the second quarter. Would that be right? I'm, 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 I'm gauging, I think, about the middle of the second quarter on. So, he done very well. He did it on the road and against a tough opponent. All right, Coach, thanks for your time.